Hey, what's going on? I thought I'd do a quick review of my HVAC service bag. I do residential light commercial, forced air, heating and cooling, uh, domestic hot water, a lot of boiler work, steam boiler work, radiant, uh, commercial and residential, domestic hot water, tankless heaters, uh, pretty much everything you would see in any residential or light commercial heating cooling or uh, hot water application so again this is just my service bag this is not my installation bag it's the uh, Vito Pro Pack MC I think it's a shorter one I think they make one that's a little bit taller which sometimes I think would be a good thing to have but then other times I kind of like having the limitation because the, the bigger things are, the more you put in them and they become too heavy. Um, so quick review on this, uh, the outside of the bag, the strap that came with this broke. Um, I think the clip broke and the, they're really well-made bags. Don't get me wrong, but the replacement cost of the strap was ridiculous. I think it was 35. I don't know. It's been a while since I looked. I found this on Amazon. Um, I think it was six or seven dollars. And it's padded real nice. It's got the swivel uh, strap, adjustable length. I've had this on here probably six months. So, you know, I can replace this many, many times before I could, you know, need to justify purchasing the Vito brand um, strap. So that's the strap I've got on there now. Got the Teflon tape, black and white electrical tape. I use the white just to occasionally label things and just use a Sharpie and write what it is. I've got uh, two pairs of jumpers on there. Got the little mag jumpers. Little world sand cloth for cleaning flame sensors and whatnot. On this side, got a little cheapy carabiner, and this is my kneeling pad. Got that from Johnstone, everybody knows those. Um, so I can throw this over my shoulder, and I got my pad, my bag, everything, and I'm hands free. So if I gotta carry a shop vac or whatever it may be, no problem. So I put a, two zip ties around there, and that just, uh, you know, pops right on there, and everything is where it needs to be. I just scrubbed this up. Um, I've had this for a couple years now, believe it or not, and it was looking pretty crusty. Um, I sprayed it down with some Simple Green, rinsed it on some hot water. I didn't actually scrub it. I just sprayed it and gave it a rinse. It cleaned up pretty decent, so... Uh, Got to save your knees in this industry. I know a lot of old guys, older than me, that can't kneel or can't walk anymore. Because they didn't take care of themselves. So, on this side I've got the uh, Milwaukee headlamp. I just recently got this. It's okay. It kind of eats the batteries, I think. I don't know. It, it dims out all the time. I've read those reviews that... You know, you put fresh batteries in it and it dims out. So I, I don't know. I wish it would just stay on and then if the battery was going to die, then just let the battery die. I don't need you to tell me it's time to turn the light down. I'll put new batteries in when they're dead. <laughs> uh, nothing else in there. Usually I just have a, a rag pushed through this little ring. Oh, uh, the outside I got my... Dewalt uh, flashlight. I got two of these thin batteries. I've got a lot of Dewalt tools with the fatter batteries, but these I've got two of these thin ones, and I epoxied a couple washers and a magnet on there, so it, it makes this thing a lot stronger. It came with these two magnets, not enough really to hold it in place when you stick it to a piece of ductwork or something, but that extra magnet, it can you can put it in any position. And it stays there. Just bent up this quick little piece of 
strapping here to accept that light. So that's where that lives. It's always with me. Um, this side, I got some rad keys. I got a heavy magnet I use sometimes for cooling season. I, uh, I guess I could do another video on what I use for my AC gauges. But I got the field piece, uh, you know, Bluetooth probes. But I used to use this a lot more whenever I had a manifold set. You know, I'd stick that on a unit when there wasn't, uh, you know, a good place to hook, put the hook through. Um, so this really doesn't get used that much anymore. On the inside. So I like to keep everything very organized because um, I hate losing tools. Tools are expensive. Um, I work to earn a living. I don't work to purchase more tools. So if I can buy tools one time and keep those tools and they don't break on me and I don't lose them, then that's great. That's that's ideal. So inside I've got the uh, Milwaukee. This is a pretty old one. Um, impactor. I don't really care that it's an impactor. I just like the compact size. You don't really need an impact driver um, for most things in, in the HVAC industry. Everybody uses them uh, because everybody loves the quick chuck and everybody loves the short size instead of having, you know, the big hand chuck on there. Um, nice little drill. Use it many, many times a day. Uh, up here, I just took a piece of PEX and I zip tied. I usually got to use a uh, pair of needle nose to get these out of here. But anyway, those are, I'll pull those out when I get my pliers out quick little tackle box. I got all the zip screws and jumpers and wire nuts, fuses, things like that. I'm not going to go through all that. Got a tape measure for checking filter sizes and fan blade diameters, things like that. Little brush. Got a, the, uh, the, uh, fluke on my meter. I have the fluke leads. Um, so I got that, that hook, that's for piercing the wire. And then I've got two of these alligator type clips to go onto the leads. And those all live, they just sit down in there. Uh, I got the furnace fuller or whatever they're called, you know, magnetic jumper. And I keep that on that little carabiner so it's always right where I need it to be. I know where it is. Um, Got the Klein uh, electrical tester, little test pen, test OCO detector. Got a, what is this, a UEI? Yeah, UEI uh, thermometer. I've got a amp probe, whatever model this is, AMP 320. It's a, it's a decent meter. Uh, I've had fluke meters in the past. Nothing wrong with a fluke. For doing simple testing, you don't need to buy a four or five hundred dollar meter. This is a reliable meter. It's held up well. This is probably six years old, maybe. And uh, I mean, it's shown its age. It's shown some wear and tear, but it works every time. Um, the only thing I did on this meter, same as I did on the light, um, is I glued some. I epoxied a couple magnets on there and that I can stick that on ductwork. It does make me a little nervous when I work on some commercial units and for some reason they like to make the electrical compartments in a lot of rooftop units, carriers specifically. Uh, they make them a lot tighter and when you're taking this guy and you're sticking it into those compartments to take an amp reading, I know I've got some pieces of metal on there, and it makes me a little nervous. Never had an incident, knock on wood, um, but I just have to be aware of that. But more times than not, it comes in uh, it comes in handy. Now I used to different service bags. I used to carry uh, small socket sets, and then I would say, "Oh, it's too heavy. I don't need it that often," so I would get rid of the socket set. Went back and forth, back and forth. 
then I finally decided I'm going to try this. And I've got, you know, standard and a metric, which I use the metric a lot for, like, the Bedoras, boilers, things like that, Bosch. But the standard is more often. I've got uh, whatever these little guys are. I don't even use those. 530 seconds. <clears throat> All the way up to uh, 7 sixteenths. And they're the quarter-inch hex drivers, okay? And they all live in this little carrier. And, you know, obviously you can put those right in the, in the driver there. Um, and I'll show you on the other side, I have extensions. So, you know, you can put, a, put that in a six inch extension and you can reach into deep compartments. And I, I'm not sure that I have ever ran into a situation yet that I wasn't able to change a blower motor um, or tear down a big, you know, a good size commercial boiler uh, with, without having to go out and get a socket set. Um, you know, maybe other than really large fasteners taking a pump apart or something like that, obviously. But this is all I need. I got this on Amazon. It's a cheapy little, I don't even know what that is, track life? I don't I don't know. Um, they don't get a lot of abuse, uh, but they work really nice. And they're compact, they're lightweight, they fit in there well. So, these are those uh, back probe sets. Here, I'm going to grab a pair of pliers here. I don't use these a lot. Um, the train Hyperion air handlers, things like that. They have the very, very small uh, test ends. You gotta, you gotta use the the tiny little back probes. So those go right on the fluke leads, um, and they're super sharp, and they're kind of delicate. So the two of them fit real nice this little piece of pex and it keeps me from getting jabbed and it keeps them intact and works real well so that's it on that side so on this side i have uh the klein i mean craftsman made these everybody puts their names on these they're cheap little wire strippers but they do have the screw cutters and the crimpers so they are convenient it's an all-in-one thing they're not very well made but they work. I've got an old pair of mini channel locks. By the way, a lot of my tools have some pink spray paint on them because uh, nobody will steal pink tools. Um, or maybe not even steal. Um, a lot of guys I work with have channel lock brand stuff or Klein brand stuff. And there's no confusion when my stuff is pink because Nobody likes pink tools. Dykes, side cutters, whatever. Linemans. I don't use these a lot for the service bag. My other bag, my install bag, I have a larger pair and they get used a lot more often. I pretty much only use these to twist together like 12 and 14 gauge wire prior to putting on a wire nut. They're they don't get used a lot. So they all live right there. Got the uh, Melco nut driver handle. This thing's awesome. Except this one is brand new because I lost mine recently. So I had to buy another one. But I got a 5 sixteenths and a quarter. I also have a quarter inch extension so you really gotta you know reach something a long distance i mean that gives you 12 inches or whatever it is um so i keep the 5 16 in there also have a six inch uh, phillips bit and again all this stuff fits in the milwaukee driver on the other side <clears throat> um, service wrench with the adapter like everybody has um, 
got a three ace open end box wrench, seven sixteens open end box wrench, and then this is a combo combo guy. It's got uh, half and nine sixteens. Those are all used mostly when you're doing pilot tubing, placing pilot assemblies. Now this is a little ratcheting, 5 sixteenths and quarter inch. I guess, yeah, this is a craftsman. I've had this for years. So what's really nice about this is that driver set, that socket set, whatever you want to call it on the other side, is also quarter inch hex. So you can take that little, you know, 3 eighths driver, put that right in this quarter inch. And now you've got a real little stubby driver, a little stubby on or off, whatever direction you need to go. Um, so you can fit in some real tight areas. Again, I've got a ratchet now, and I've got sockets without actually having a ratchet and socket set to lug around. Um, a flat blade screwdriver, I think that's a number two, I don't know. And then I got a real thin one there. And got a step bit. Use that just for, I don't know if I ever even drill all the way down this to the end. Basically the first one or two just for putting a hole in a duct to take a, uh, a you know, temperature rise. So those both live there. That lives there. My wrenches live here. I've got a little pressure gauge it goes up to 30 psi a lot of times you work on a boiler most times when you work on a boiler the gauge on that boiler is not correct you can add water it'll say 12 psi and you're on a four-story home and you think oh I gotta add a little bit of water you start adding water boom the relief blows because um, the gauge was bad and the gauge never moved so every time I service a boiler put a gauge on it and check the accuracy of the gauge that's actually on the boiler. Got this Klein screwdriver. It's got the real small um, terminal block. Um, it's like the thermostat type screwdriver. Um, but, like I got this little guy here. Okay. But, this gives you a lot more torque. Um, you don't have little pieces like on this guy. I don't use this a lot. It's got the changeable Phillips, whatever. Um, but this is a little bit more prone to be lost. It's smaller, it disappears. This guy, nice and noticeable, nice and big. But it also gives you the torque on, on some connectors that you need. So again, you see, I, I like to put everything, everything has its place. I've got little pieces of PVC and packs and whatever. And everything goes in its home, where it belongs. Uh, got the Klein, little stubby guy. Uh, channel lock. Got uh, just a changeable razor blade. A little telescoping inspection mirror. Believe it or not, get it out. Believe it or not, this is not broken uh, because it kind of where it lives right there. It stays nice and protected. It's been in there for years now, and knock on wood, it's been good. Um, what else? Got an oiler. You know the old zoom spout. Got the. Uh, Crescent, 8 inch crescent wrench. I, this thing has been through battles. I mean, I've, you know, everybody uses them as a hammer. Um, but I've had this, I think it's even bent. It's got a bend to it. Um, but this is, I'm not even sure they make this exact model anymore. Um, but I've, you know, I've kept it clean. And it's, I do wish. Everybody talks about the wide opening jaw. I agree with that. I, I do wish it opened a little bit wider. Whatever that is, it looks to be like maybe an inch and an eighth. 
Uh, I do wish it opened a little wider, but uh, what else? I got a little cheapy level in here just for really just for thermostats or if I'm you know looking at a rooftop unit that might have a draining issue and I think you know you stand back and you eyeball it and you say is that really pitched the right way I'm not setting equipment with that I've got a brazing rod in here with a hook on it um, I use this just for you know reaching into something and try to pull something I dropped um, or the hook acts sort of as a handle so if you gotta poke and pry at something you can clean out um, condensate tubing things like that and that loose down there just a wire brush got some zip ties got the Klein 11 in one This brand here, I got these on Amazon, made in the USA. They are nice, ball, ball end on both ends. Um, so you can get, and they're real stubby, you know, they don't have that long L coming off of them, real stubby. So you can get in real tight areas and, and, and uh, loosen some things up with them. Um, maybe had these probably coming up on a year. Um, of course, you only use whatever. You get this big set, and you end up only using four or five sizes out of it. But so far, so good on those. Um, I think that is it, other than my little Tylenol. Because you always you got those customers that just drive you nuts. No, I've got uh, I've got some bits in here and they just happen to be the uh, security uh, bits that they got, they got the little dimple in there um, but you can take off uh, burner covers on um, like the state AO Smith ream water heaters they're all the star drive the torch drive um, and then just a series of different uh, you know, 516 quarter inch Phillips the little bits they live in there. Don't um, don't get into that too often, but it's there. Uh, I believe that's it. So works out well. Nice and light. It's not overloaded. Again, it's a diagnostic basic service bag. I think the bag is three, four years old, and it's held up really well. It's got that solid plastic bottom like most of the vetoes do maybe all the vetoes I'm not sure um, well built I wish they were made in the US I guess they're designed in the US but they're not made in the US um, but we'd probably pay three times the amount if they were so and they're already expensive enough and uh, you get what you pay for I guess uh, so that's it so I guess I'll do another video um, I have another bag that clips on here, just a little pouch that I keep my manometer on, primarily in uh, heating season. And then in cooling season, I have another bag that I clip on here, uh, which is a small veto bag that I keep my AC probes in. And then my big install bag, uh, which is also a veto bag, um, I use for boiler installations. I don't do really any forced air installations anymore. Um, but if I did, that's a bag I would carry in. But I could do a couple other videos. Um, so this is my first video ever. I'm going to uh, post this up and hopefully everybody likes it. And uh, hopefully the uh, next video works out. See you then. Hey, real quick, I realized something else I forgot. This right here. Um, it happens to be pink. It has nothing to do with uh, the pink spray paint on the tools. Um, this is a lighter, grill lighter. Um, go on Amazon and you order foldable lighter and it says, you know, no guarantee 
uh, on color or something like that. So whatever. I've ordered three of them over the years and every one has come pink. But anyway, the ones that don't fold up, they don't fit in any bag and they break and they're junk. These foldable ones, they last years. They're great. So that's what I got there.